All right, guys. So how's she going? So, yeah, she's about eight o'clock. I got my uh, got my locking pliers back. Uh, <laughs> stored on those. So I was pretty much using these on a on a job that ended up being. For about one year, a little about, yeah, probably about that, maybe a little longer. Um, on my uh, old computer chair, uh, the little gas cylinder or whatever that lets you raise and lower your seat, it uh, blew a seal or something. I don't know. It was it was leaking oil. It wouldn't hold pressure. So, <clears throat> in order to have the seat up all the way. Cause that's what I have to have it at for me to be comfortable when I'm sitting at my computer desk because I wouldn't hold my weight anymore I uh, <laughs> just clamped that right onto the little cylinder and it actually worked I mean it destroyed the cylinder obviously because you know that's a chrome cylinder and um, but it doesn't matter anyway right so <clears throat> that chair is now in behind the shop over here I have managed to uh, um, my sister got me one because she was going to order uh, um, some stuff anyway, and then whatever. It's just it's kind of complicated how to tell you, but yeah. So I managed to get a new computer chair. It actually showed up today, um, so it's actually uh, it's actually it's actually a gaming chair you know like it, you're meant to sit in it for long hours and it is fairly comfortable so but <clears throat> yeah <laughs> so but yeah it's not it's not too bad so but at least the old chair i can finally officially retire it now because it's been falling apart it broke um about two weeks ago something broke on it and the chair was like a little more um well, you're supposed to be able to, you know, pivot these chairs back, you know, lean back on them. But this one, the plate broke underneath, so instead of going straight back, it would kind of go off to an angle. And the more you did it, well, then the more you broke the plate. So she was, uh, she was pretty much uh, wore it out. So, so it ended up being a, a pretty good turnaround, I guess. I managed to, uh, uh, you know, get a new chair, get the part for the mower. Um, what else was there? A couple other smaller things. I, I still have to get a couple other small things done, but um, kind of is, is what it is. So, but yeah. So what else? Well, what's going on today? Um, not that it really matters all that much, I guess, to you guys, but. The young guy finally came and got his bull. His bull's been here, I think, for... Um, I don't know. When I counted it out, it came out to like four or five months, but I don't think that's quite right. So, um, But I think it was November, I think, when he brought it. So, But it, it's been here a while anyway. He's, he's been here longer than he really should have been. But it is what it is. So, But he finally came and got it. Uh, he took my bull as well. Um, he says it was it was up to me if I wanted to get rid of it now or not. My uncle has a couple of bulls as well, but, but my uncle decided to hang on to them for you know a couple a couple more months yet because he says they were a little too small. Yeah, he thought my bull was I think the very first bull to be born, so he would be bigger than the rest. He's still a little small, but I think. It ain't gonna really matter too much. But the young guy says she's probably not gonna be shipping that bull off. Probably at least for another couple of weeks. So he's gonna take it over to his dad's place and it can just hang out there for a couple of weeks. And then uh, when he decides when he's got a load, then he'll take my bull in and then uh, we'll get paid. It doesn't take long to get a to get a check from them either. I mean they have to process it and weigh him and whatever, but. After they, they do that, you're only talking probably maybe max of like four days, you know, and then you have a a check in your in your hands. So 
it's not the worst. But I don't know, the young guy says he says, you know, rough guessing, but he says that he should bring at least twelve hundred, but that that'll all vary of course, but he just thinks. But I don't know. I guess even if I got twelve hundred for him it would still be you know, a, a giant help uh, to getting the tire for the 15. It's not a huge amount, but it is going to give me a huge, you know, boost. I still don't think I'm going to get the tire until probably fall. I just, there's too much shit going on and things are breaking. So then I have to replace things that are broken. And then there's other things that I have to replace. You know, um, there's, I like to have a, like a stock of stuff. Um, because we tend to go through them out quite a bit, so we have to basically order it in bulk. And I'm not talking about like food. I mean, we're always prepared for stuff like that, but just you know, stuff that we need in the house to make us comfortable. So, and then I lost my pocket knife. That was like a probably a thirty dollar knife. So I got to turn around, and go order, and I got to go get another one of those. I think Ace has them behind the counter there. Um, they got a, like a multi-tool and I think just a standard knife, but that's all I, that's all I need, but it kind of pissed me off. So I got to replace my knife. I got one in the, in the blazer. That's a multi-purpose knife. Um, I think my sister got me that when she was down in Florida. It's got my name on it. <laughs> you know, my first name. So that's why she got it, but. I keep that in the blazer, so in case we need to cut something, then it's there. And then my old pocket knife, that's in the 15. That's the one that's starting to get, you know, wore out. But it was still good enough that you could hang on to it and use it as a emergency spare or whatever. But that stays on the tractor. So, oh, and I got one in Big Red too, but it's a much smaller uh, multi-purpose knife kind of thing. Multi-tool. It's a very small one, though. But if you needed to cut some wire or whatever, I mean, it's underneath all my junk, but it's in there in case we need it. The John Deere doesn't have a knife, obviously, because I always have my pocket one on me. So, not that I need one in this one either, but <laughs> might as well. So, yeah, so we got rid of the bolts today. Um... And this is what it is. So we got that done and over with. I didn't figure he'd come eventually and get him. I mean, you think that he would have have to, but um, he probably needs that bull for another job, you know. But it is what it is. So we uh, got the bullshit, and I don't know you guys probably don't want to hear it, but you know, it's it's just reality. That's what's going to be happening for this year. The 15 is not going to be running this year. Um, it's just not going to happen. For one, I don't have my new tire. And two, the 1586 bled all its hydraulic oil out. So, I just, yeah. I'm going to have to get some hydraulic oil, um, you know, so we can move it. We'll probably have to move it when we want to put the new tire on. I don't know, but... Yeah, we're going to have to because it's sitting in grass and the grass will just sink in and won't support the weight of the tractor. So we're going to have to move it to the driveway. And then that there it'll be gravel, so that sh should do just fine. Um, but it's going to have to have at least, you know, 10 gallons or something put in it. But I don't know. There goes a jet. But I told the the young guy that there's probably going to be a good chance that the 15's not even going to be running. Regardless if, you know, the tire or not. It's just the fact that it lost all its hydraulic oil. And if that thing takes 25 or whatever gallons, you know, to, to fill it. Over there, that guy wants, you might as well say $85 a pail. And there's going to be some tax. So, you know, you might as well say 85 dollars for a five gallon pail of hydraulic oil um the young guy says that we ought to go um there's another store 
it's on the North Dakota side. We don't have none here, but I forget the name of the place, but it's kind of like a cheap store. Like they sell cheaper stuff. And he runs a hydraulic oil. He buys it from them. Um, it's like an antique something type of oil. He says it's, it's meant for older tractors. It's, it's a cheaper oil. And he says that you can get a five gallon pail of that shit for like 40 bucks. And he says that's what we ought to get to find the leak. Well, he knows what the leak is, but he says to find other leaks. You know, since I mean, there are other leaks, obviously, but he thinks that the one that's um, down by the three point, it's not the three point itself. The three point actually is kind of a, a separate unit. He says what it is. It's just behind the three point where the where the lower link arms would connect to your tractor. He says what you have to do is you have to remove the three point hitch, get it out of your way, you know, for easy access. And then he says you got to remove, remove some bolts and whatever. He says what it is is that there's a at the very bottom in the back where the three point would be, but behind that. He says that there's like a like a big shaft. And I don't I guess it rotates or something, I'm not really sure. But he says that there's a shaft with inside of a shaft, and one of those shafts, or maybe even both, he said it has O-rings on it. And he says that the chances of that O-ring being blown out is probably quite high. He thinks that's where it's coming from. He thinks that the shaft down there, um, one of the gaskets uh, cracked out. So he says it's, it's not a horrible job to do. You just have to experiment with it, you know, and, and just kind of get, you know, you, I got to look in the book. I haven't done that yet, but I got to look in the book to kind of get a picture of it so that maybe I could, I guess, like draw a mental picture in my head to kind of picture how it would come apart. Even though know, the pictures will show you. But I like to have it in my mind and I kind of like to think about it, you know. Just so maybe I can make more sense of it than just what the pictures are telling me. But then sometimes just taking a mental note of it is never going to be as good as actually digging in and just doing it. So, But I like to start with looking at the book and then, you know, taking some pictures of it with my mind. And then just focus on that, you know, picture it coming apart. And then, you know, there you go. I don't know, I think he said that you had to have a special tool or something to slide them out, but he doesn't know what happened to his, and obviously I ain't going to have one, but he says that you can easily make a tool like it too. So I guess it wouldn't come out by hand, you would have to either buy that special tool or you'd have to make one to pull it out. But he said there really is no sense, he said don't even bother putting hydraulic oil in it. Because it'll probably just it'll just leak it all back out. Even if you were just to, you know, whatever. But see, I'm going to have to, I'm either going to have to move it, you know, to put the new tire on, or it just sits on the dual then until we actually can tear that apart and then fix it. So. But obviously, I'm not going to be fixing it now. I mean, we're, we're, we're probably talking at least another two, three months before we can even think about it. So, I kind of told the young guy that it's uh, going to be up to him. He's going to have to bring one of his tractors down. Um, if we have to rake hay, if we absolutely have to do it, he's going to have to bring one of his down. We'll use my rake, but we'll use one of his tractors. That's just the way it's going to have to be. If we have to rake hay. Um, I had asked him if he got the tent in the shop. He said no. He's got all his cars and his trucks and stuff in there. He's got all kinds of shit going on there. And he's still working on all that. And, and then I think him and his one son there, they're working on a project tractor. It's a little small uh, tractor, a little orange one. So that's their project that they're working on. <laughs> Wish I had a project. Oh, wait a minute. I do. It's everything I own. 
So, um, but yeah, so, I don't know. He, he's not talking about getting rid of the 10 inch sticks. Now he's back to saying that he, there's no way in hell he's selling it. He wants to fix it. He wants to get it in the shop so he can fix it. But, told him that something, something's going to have to, you know, something's going to have to happen because we're going to have to have another tractor. But he says he's got other ones that we can use. Or he's got other ones that we can use. Um, so, we can either use, well, if we had, I, I, the way I figured it, you know, if he had the 1086 back up and running, he's most likely going to put that on the baler. And then the Magnum is most likely going to stay on the baler because they they like the Magnum a lot. So my theory is that they're going to put the 1086 back on the baler. The Magnum's going to stay on the baler. Um, the 4240 is most likely still going to be on the cutter, so it's going to be cutting hay. And that leaves his 986. There's most likely there's a chance that they're not going to put that back on the baler if they don't get the 10 in the shop. Uh, or if they do get in the shop, whatever. Um, but then if we also had to, he says that we, they could bring the 1566 down, which is the same horsepower as my 1586. It's just obviously an older tractor, but um, that's got the loader on it. So, and that's what he's using right now, I guess, apparently. So, that's uh, really just the, that's the options that we have. So, because there's no way that the 15 is going to be going this year. Which kind of sucks. It's going to hurt too. Because I won't be able to work my trail. So. I'm just going to have to let the trail go. For now. And then. Unless. Something else happens. I don't know. So. I don't know. If we get the leak fixed. You know. I guess before we get the tire. Well that would be okay because i can still cultivate my trail or work the trail up with that dual on it i mean i've already done it i did it all last year so it was wasn't really much of a problem but i don't know how much more faith i want to put in my dual so i don't know but it would be nice to get the tire here at least and maybe you know if, if we can get the leak fixed and then get the tire here well then i guess we're all right but you know then, then the tractor would be fully functional but it's got other leaks and stuff too but they're all minor leaks and they just i mean yeah they need their gaskets and o-rings and stuff put in them too but i just don't feel like doing it right now but he says what they're better off doing is just getting that cheaper hydraulic oil that's only like 40 bucks a pail. And he says dump that in your tractor, you know, fill it up like you normally would. And then he says run it. Run it for, I guess, anywhere from five minutes to the rest of the season. And then if you don't notice any new leaks and if you don't notice your hydraulic oil level going down, well, then you're fine. But... <clears throat> I mean, I don't know. I would have to go pretty far because that other store that he was talking about, there's none around here, obviously. You have to go on the North Dakota side, and, and I don't know if it would be worth it. I feel like he'd be end up spending the same amount going there, you know, and, like, you'd burn so much fuel just going there, whereas going here, I don't have to get that, I don't have to burn that much fuel, but then you're paying so much for hydraulic oil because they want, you know, $83 a freaking pail. And that's supposed to be not the best quality hydraulic oil either. It's not like John Deere Hytran or whatever Case IH has. So, but the young guy says he doesn't run, um, you know, the Hytran or whatever, you know, the good hydraulic oil from Case IH. Um, I think it was in his 1566 because he says that thing leaks, it leaks everywhere. So he says, what's the sense? So, um, 
But he says everything else that he runs, he runs the higher quality stuff because it doesn't leak as much. So like the John Deere 4240, that doesn't leak hardly anything for hydraulic oil. So he runs John Deere oil in that, I'm sure of it. And then the 1086, that probably gets that Case IH stuff. And then the same thing with the Magnum, that all gets the good, that gets the good stuff. Well, it's the same thing with my John Deere lawnmower. That thing has zero for leaks, so I buy John Deere oil for it. You know, same as Big Red. Well, Big Red leaks engine oil, but we know what the problem is. We, we can easily fix it, but since this thing doesn't technically leak any oil, besides that one problem, I always buy Polaris oil. I buy the best. So, um, it just is what it is, you know. The Tahoe, I think I really am better off going to GM and getting GM quality stuff. Um, because they just have better stuff. And I have to go to North Dakota anyway. I got a, a postcard in the mail. I, I don't know, maybe I already talked about it. Um, I got a postcard in the mail saying that there was a recall on my Tahoe for the airbag system in it that is defective. So they want me to take it into a local... Yeah, the kitty there. That's a stray kitty for you. It's not mine. So, but yeah. They want me to take the Tahoe in to a GM dealer. They did the work for me already, and they found me a GM dealer. And there's actually one in the North Dakota side in the same town that my John Deere dealer's at. So that works out really well. So I'm kind of hoping maybe when the weather starts to turn nicer, um, maybe we'll take it in and get the airbag fixed. Because that would be technically one less thing I have to worry about if we could, could, you know, get the airbag fixed on it, right? So, but other than that, you know, the, you know, the Tahoe has been a great machine. I mean, there's, again, it's got like a hundred and... 35,000 miles, whatever, and engine does not leak one drop of oil. The transmission does not leak one drop of oil. The rear end does not drip one, doesn't leak a drop of oil. You know, it's it's a very solid unit for being a cop car, probably being abused, and, and you know, I don't know how much of a hard life it had, because if, it was, if it's been a cop car here, there isn't really much... <laughs> You don't see quite that many bad guys over here, so I don't know how much these blazers have, have been ran, but, you know, I'm sure once in a while it's been pushed pretty hard, but, but it is what it is, so. But yeah, so that's what's going on. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if I'll run to that store or not and get that cheaper hydraulic oil. I mean, it's 40 bucks a, a pail, so technically it would be cheaper. But, you know, I mean, that's, I don't know. I, I mean, I guess, honestly, you know, like, I, like I've said before, if the 1586 had zero leaks, well, then I would be running what Case IH has, you know. And their oil is way more expensive than all of this stuff, so. But it, it would be totally worth it. You know, but if your tractors are going to piss oil all the time and drip every chance they get, well, what's the sense? You know, I think if you fixed the massive leak and then fix the remotes, which the guy, young guy says you can also just do that yourself. He says it's just another O-ring. You just pull it all apart, put all new O-rings in that little center cylinder that slides out, and then you slap it back in, and it's fine. So I don't know, but I just don't really want to piss around with it. Yeah, I'm going to be paying more if I took took it to Case IH and had them fix them, but I'm only going to do one at a time. I'm not going to do all three, but I just figured, you know, let Case IH deal with it, and I don't have to deal with it. i got enough things that i got to fix, so... I wanted to work on that little farm all this year. I don't think it's it's not going to happen. I got like I said, I got a couple of parts for it, but they're not going to matter. It's a starter's crap, and I got the carburetor rebuild kit, so my uncle could rebuild the carburetor anytime. But we need a starter first, so either rebuild this one or just get a whole new one. But 
I don't know. It'll, it, it's just, I don't know. I ain't going to worry about it. So, tractor's going to be down. Um, I just got to get caught up with crap. So, I don't know what else to tell you. So, and then sometime this summer, I don't know when, maybe this summer, I'm going to take my front John Deere uh, tire in, the front steer tire on the John Deere, and have them put a tube in it because it keeps going flat. I mean, it always has. Don't get me wrong. It's always been that way. I don't know if it's the valve stem or if the tire has a slight hole in it or what, but it's usually it's been a pretty slow leak. But I went and looked at it uh, yesterday or the day before. It was completely flat. So, of course, I imagine the cold has put a, put a hurting on it, too. It's probably released a lot more air than normal, but I'm I'm just sick and tired of having to go out every, you know, at least once a month or whatever and put air in it. Um, but I haven't really had to touch the John Deere much either in the last couple of months. So, yeah, I probably should go, should probably go start the John Deere, I suppose, make sure it still runs. But it hasn't ran, I don't think, for probably at least a good month. There, uh, yeah, there just hasn't been any uh, snow to blow, which is perfectly fine by me. And they, uh, they changed the temperatures again. They were saying that we were supposed to get, for the daytime highs, uh, for about four days, it was supposed to only be in the teens. Now they changed it to low 20s to mid 30s. Um, that's still pretty good, but that's still not working weather, unfortunately. But I'll still take it. I'm not going to complain too much because I don't like the cold. It's actually pretty cold right now. I do believe it's a little bit... It, the phone says that it's 20 out, but I think it's a little cooler than that because of the wind. So it's probably like 15 out right now with the wind. So... <laughs> it just is what it is, right? So... <clears throat> So yeah, so that's what's going on. Um, so at least we have two less cows to feed feed now, you know. Um, the young the young guy said that my uncle could have gotten rid of his if he wanted to, but my uncle um, thought they were a little too small yet because they were the last calves to be born on this farm. So, my bull was the very first one to be born, and that's why he was slightly bigger than the rest. So, but I still let him go anyway. The young guy said he'll hang on to him until he needs to um, take take a load in. So, I hope at least, I mean, 1,200 would be, I guess, all right. But I honestly, I would think I would rather have 1,500, but... If I don't get that, I don't get that. But if I got 1500 and a brand new tire, you know, with including shipping and everything already, it's only like 1700 you know. So you can see how close I would be to ordering this tire. And yeah, I am going to order it online because that's just the cheapest route I know. And it's just overall, it's going to be easier on me. I don't have to go going calling up certain dealers or repair shops, tire shops, whatever. And I can have it delivered to my home. It would be a lot closer and I don't have to put all the wear and tear on my stuff. They can go put it, they can just put all the wear and tear on their trucks. They, they replace their trucks every few years anyway because they put so many damn miles on them. So <clears throat> let them deal with the problems. <laughs> so, but yeah, I don't know. So, but anyway, I, I just hope that the market's still up. I haven't really checked. But if he brings anything less than a thousand, I think that's going to be kind of disappointing because it's going to hurt. So, but I don't, I don't have no control over it. I have no control over the market. So, it's just going to be whatever, whatever they give me is what I got to take. So, but whatever, it is what it is. Unfortunately, so. But yeah, so that's what we'll, I guess, just wait now. Just 
she wanted to get paid and and <clears throat> whatever else. So, but if the young guy is correct, you know, if that's where it's leaking, it's technically it would make sense because there's no, you know, there's no oil on the dipstick and. That's where that's, you know, blown out, supposedly. That would technically be the lowest point of the transmission. So, the chances of it uh, losing all 100% of its hydraulic oil is pretty, pretty high. It most likely lost all 25 gallons. So, and it's just going to stay empty. There's no sense of putting more in it if it's just going to leak it all back out again. So, um, I might, this spring, well, I'm... I'm going to look at the book. I'm going to study the book a little bit. I got to, you know, figure that out first. But if we can, if we can look into that, um, this spring, I'll probably take the three point hitch off and, you know, get it out of the way at least. So at least that's kind of, that's kind of one less thing to deal with. And then figure out what parts we need and then uh, order them. Either, I'm sure either, I don't know if Steiner would have them because they're more of an older tractor repair company or parts company. But if I can't order them online anywhere, All State Egg might have them. There's a chance that they could have them. But if nobody has them, well then Case IH, they can get them. So, but, <clears throat> yeah, so that's what we'll do, I'll, this spring I'll, I'll work on my mower deck first, get that done, get that ready for mowing season, and then uh, we'll, uh, we'll start tearing the three-point hitch off, at least get that off, and then study the book, you know, and then if it makes sense, well then it'll make sense. So I would have to try to maybe if I could find that tool, that would be nice. But I highly doubt I'm going to find that tool. Um, so it is what it is. I mean, I'm not going to worry about it now. There's no sense. So, but it'll be up to the young guy. Um, you know, you know, like I said, if we have to rake hay this year because maybe there's too much rain or whatever, you know. Um, gonna have to bring one of his tractors down so then we can can rake so we'll still use my rake like i said but we uh yeah we're just gonna have to use, use one of his tractors so and it would be nice to have air conditioning for once would be kind of nice so you know but that's really, I guess, only it would make more sense if you got the 10 in the shop. But the way it's going, I don't think it's going to get the 10 in the shop anytime soon because it's got too many other vehicles in there right now. And it's got his little project tractor that he's working on, too. So it's just going to be what it is. So <clears throat> I don't know. It is what it is. We'll worry about it some other fucking time. Right now, it's the more deck. And so you're talking at least probably the end of the month before I get to even thinking about working on it so but whatever so yeah anyways guys i guess i'm gonna take off so i guess i have a good day and stuff and stuff so yeah thanks for watching guys take her easy